today I want to talk to you about the art of Thanksgiving, the art of Thanksgiving. Uh, I, I think it's very important that we continue on in this revelation that God has given us for Thanksgiving, that it's not just for a single day, it's a lifestyle for us. And as we are moving into this, I'm gonna, we're going to dig in. I like to, when I talk about Thanksgiving, I always go to this story. And it's been a couple of years since I shared the story of Nebuchadnezzar. So I want to share that with you this, this year today. And, um, but I want to start off with this idea that the art of Thanksgiving is the, is the key to grow and main, growing and maintaining influence and increase. We're in the series on in, increase and influence. How many of you feel like God is preparing something for you? It's a season of increase and a season of influence that God has something for us. And it's not by accident that we're being positioned as we are in this hour. Amen. God has that. So as we are looking at this, believers, we should know that the promotion that we are looking for does not come from our own strength and abilities. That we don't get, we don't, we don't receive promotion because we're skilled. Uh, we, we, you know, so you have the tendency to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders when you think that you're gifted and skilled. You feel like you can accomplish something. You can do something. You are empowered. You are this. And I want you to understand that God has done something better than what we could ever accomplish. That we carry something much more potent and much more dynamic than what we ever thought that we could carry. God has given us something that is more powerful and more mighty. And uh, so I want us to understand this as a, if you're an unbeliever or watching on TV or listening here, if you're an unbeliever, that you should have this understanding that life is hard without God. When, when you don't have God, life is going to be hard anyways. And you should have God while you're going through that hardship or hardness in life because life is, is meant to prove something in you. It's designed to prove something in you, either prove that you are of God or prove that you're not of God. And it is designed to actually force something in or out of you. It's the whole makeup. God didn't have to allow it to go the way that it did. It wasn't an accident. And none, none of it was beyond his control or his comprehension. He knew exactly what would take place. We, we think the fall of man was an accident, that man decided that they were going to fall. But there was something that was in the whole design of the makeup of mankind and the makeup of earth that you couldn't help but have this reaction for instance, you guys listen, you guys look at me like, <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me explain it with this analogy. How many of you ever used to watch Wild Wild Kingdom? <laughs> Wild Kingdom? You guys didn't watch Wild Kingdom? Okay. What would, uh, uh, um, what's, uh, Jeff Corwin. I don't know if Jeff Corwin does this, but most of them do. Or, oh, Steve, Steve Irwin. Okay, so, you know, you know, when you see, you get the great footage, that great footage of the lion taking down the gazelle. That didn't just happen. You drop a lion next to a gazelle, guess what's going to happen? Okay, see, you're not getting my picture yet. You don't have to make them do it. You just put the nature next to each other. And the nature gravitates to this, and so you now have a documentary. Can I tell you, when God placed us in an area where our nature put us in that garden along with a snake, along with a tree, it was just a scenario that played itself out with the knowledge that God knew what was in a man, God knew what was in snake, God knew what was in tree. You guys hear me? And now we're living out a documentary. And now we get to learn how to handle this throughout watching and living and being a part of this documentary that the natures now can be under control. Now, God has given us an opportunity to control our nature and take on his nature because that opportunity of controlling our nature and taking on his nature would have never been if the tree hadn't been eaten of. You understand? So we get to show that God is more powerful than our nature by helping our nature and our behavior change. Is this all right? So I, so I know that you've, you read in, in, you know, and you've been in Sunday school and they taught you how it all happened, but let me tell you, we actually are supposed to win and this world is supposed to test you the whole way through it. All right? That took me a little longer to get there. Now I got 35 extra minutes I gotta take from you. 
you need to, you, when we need to, as a unbeliever, we need to also know that sin is enjoyable for a moment, but it doesn't have any promotion in it. Sin is, is impossible for you to be promoted in, in doing sinful things because sin is only momentary. Sin doesn't have any long-term gratification. There's no long-term thanksgiving in sin. Sin is immediate gratification or immediate thanksgiving. So you get your gratitude or your thanks immediately every time you partake in sin. That's why we don't partake in sin because we like long-term thanks. All right, because I don't want I don't want I don't want temporary gratification or temporary thanks. I want to have thanksgiving. I want to be able to have thanks that is given out and given out and given out. So if you're giving thanks, you're sowing seed for more opportunity of thanks to come along. Can I tell you the blessing so strong on you? You can prosper in the midst of Egypt. You can prosper in the midst of the worst place you can imagine. The worst of the worst is your place to be planted. You know, Christ talks about his yoke. How many of you know that scripture? If we have the the message Bible in Matthew 11, that would be great. Matthew 11, verse 28, if we have that. It says here, are you Are you tired? (laughs) hallelujah that's why we're preaching this are are you tired are you worn out burned out on religion come to me get away with me and you'll receive your life get away with me and you'll receive your life next next verse please and i'll show you how to take a real rest how many you know you may eat some turkey and get tired but that's not a real rest Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Someone say unforced. This is what God wants you to walk in is unforced. There's no effort in it. It's, it's just following and walking with him and working with him and seeing how he does it. Amen. And when we watch how he does it, then we are not reliant on our skill and our ability. We're reliant on what he does how he walks it out and it's it's unforced someone say unforced rhythms there's a rhythm to your next level you know the enemy tries to get you in the cycle of defeat god wants to get you in a cycle of victory it's a rhythm of grace grace has a rhythm to it next verse please i won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting ill-fitting on you keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly now that's well how do we do that how do we posture ourselves to be to be connected with jesus like that we do it by humility when we humble ourselves the rhythms of grace come to us the last verse we're going to look at last scripture we're going to look at here second corinthians 12 verse 9 and he said to me my grace someone say my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness therefore most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me I want you to see this that when I first when I used to read this scripture and of course the the lead-in of the scripture is that Paul's praying take away this this thorn in the flesh he remember the thorn in the flesh is a very widely debated conversation what is the thorn in the flesh. And I don't think it really matters. I mean, because you can get so busy and what's the thorn in the flesh and not really know. Speculate, is it his eyes? Was he blind? He was blind. He couldn't see because in this other scripture, he said, bring my book because I this small print I can't handle. Right? And then they said in this, it's his nose because he had a big nose. Big nose. Or, or it was his weak sounding voice. I mean, they went through all this other garbage, but they're missing the, the, the idea. Oh, 
And we, and, you know, the, some say he looked weak and he was, you know, all that stuff is nonsense. What really matters is what God said. Yeah. Well, you have to break down this, what God said. My, the word grace, we know it as the word grace. And we say, oh yeah, grace, I have grace. And we usually associate that to entitlement. The word grace also is the same word favor. My wife shared that earlier, same word favor. It's also the beginning of, of the word gifts or charisma is the gifts, chris. And then, but there's this word here that is, that is found that is not associated to it often, which is the word thanks. My thanks. If you look at the definition of the word grace or grace, you'll find the word thanks there. And when I realized, you know, when I started studying this, the Lord activated me to study it because I was just finished a service and I was really overwhelmed with the fact that people's lives are, are just constantly under attack. And when you stand in a service and you're prophesying over people, one person after another, after another, after another, one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, you don't only get to see the good. How many of you know that? You don't only get to see the good. You get to see the devastation. You stand over and you prophesy God's healing your abuse. You don't, you don't just hear the word abuse. You get to see the abuse. You, you stand over someone that God is healing the rape or God is healing this embezzlement. God is healing all the, you get to see all the stuff. And at the end of the day, you're done. He's like, everybody's free, but you go home and you have all of these thoughts and these images that have been imprinted on your heart. So you can have God's feeling while you're prophesying it. So I used to go to serve, go home after a service and I would, I would have to watch Lucy a ball. I would have to, I love Lucy. I would have to watch little, little, the three stooges or the little rascals. I mean, something that was just complete Tom and Jerry. I mean, just something that was just, it probably wasn't the best shows because they're all hitting each other, but it was, right? She, she, ah, <laughs> it was the kind of humor I didn't have to think about because I've been thinking all night long in the spirit because you get to see people's lives and, and my family's asleep and, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, I just lay down, and the Holy Spirit comes in. He just rubs my hand, and he says, thank you, son. Thank you for, for doing this for me. Thank you for being there where I can actually speak into people's lives. And, and never before had I ever heard God say thank you. Never before I had ever, ever heard God say thank you. Because we always take for granted that we just got to do this. We got to do it to please him. But the reality is he, he's very thankful. If he wasn't thankful, darkness would be his heart. And we hear him saying, go over there, do this, sit down and do that. We hear that all the time in our minds. But the truth of the matter is he's saying thank you more than he's saying anything else. Because he is very grateful. And I sat on that bed and he just rubbed my forehead and the Holy Spirit just ministered to me. And he said, thank you, son. Because you didn't have to do this. You didn't have to go out and help people. You didn't have to do this. But you've chosen to put yourself in a position that I can reach through you and love people. The person that shakes your hand, Jesse's there today walking in with a greeting, with a smile. That's a God saying, thank you, Jesse. Thank you for what you're doing. Because every time you come in, someone is smiling because you're smiling at them. The things that we take for granted, the things that we don't see, the things God's up there saying, I see it, I see it, I see it. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to be a church that not only says thank you, but also hears thank you. That I want to be a people that hears thank you from God. That this weekend that we hear thank you, that God is so grateful and so thankful the way you love people, the way you, the way you encourage people, the way you build, because that's what society is built on. That as we hear thank you from him, that we can turn out and, hear, and give thank you to someone else. That we can be that voice of God to someone. Come on, can I tell you the blessing so strong on you? You can prosper in the midst of Egypt. You can prosper in the midst of the worst place you can imagine. The worst of the worst is your place to be planted. Maybe the reason we don't say thank you in society enough is because we don't actually think God's saying thank you. 
If we actually heard it from our papa, wouldn't it be easy to turn around and say thank you to others? One of the things in our family, we, we treasure it. We treasure politeness in our home. I mean, we treasure, we fight for it. We keep, we keep it. We never allow it to escape. That means not saying, hey, you're in the kitchen, get me something. No, you are. No, you already there. Do it. You get no that that stuff. Hey, would you mind adding that politeness in the house? Because if you're not polite in the house, you're not going to be polite in public. If you can't say thank you in the home, and if you don't say thank you to one another, as a team, as a staff, saying thank you. We can't be just saying, volunteer, go do this, volunteer, go do that. Would you mind? And then when they do it, understanding with a gratitude in our heart that they're here serving. We should not posture ourselves in a way that God's not posturing himself. God's looking at it all and goes, oh, this is so wonderful. We had thank you back to our congregation. Thank you back to our nation. Thank you back to our city. Thank you back to our home. Light will break in. And kick the darkness out. Thank you. I hope, I pray that you hear God himself say thank you to you. That as you lay on your bed or you get in your car or you pick up something, whatever it is. I see people, they walk around and they're picking up stuff off the ground. And I know every time I see someone doing it, because God said to me one day, he said, even when someone picks up a piece of paper in the church, I'm so thankful for them. I want to break off that mindset of the enemy that would tell you that God's not grateful. That would tell you, suck it up. I break that in the name of Jesus. Amen. The end of Nebuchadnezzar's life, you know, he's, he's this seven days, seven years actually pass, pass over him. You know what he does? He's, he's, he's like a wild beast. He's got full hair, like it says, like feathers covering his body. His fingernails are grown out. Seven years, he hasn't had any kind of grooming. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and the Bible says he looks up. What's the first thing he does? He looks up. Do you know whenever you're going through something in life, gra- gratitude causes you to look up. He looks up, and then when he looks up, he declares what God wanted him to declare. You are almighty God. You are amazing. You are mighty in every way. And it says, as he, as he begins to declare that, the reason of his mind comes back to him. His mind comes back to him. And as his mind comes, how many you know if you're not grateful, you lost your mind? <laughs> Don't lose your mind. Stay thankful. The, his mind come back to him. And at that same time, look what it says here in that, that verse. Reason returned to me. And for the glory of my kingdom and my honor and splendor returned to him. The moment his mind came back to him, it all returned to him. Go back, go to that very last verse that I have for us. And this is what Nebuchadnezzar says. After everything's returned to him. Praise and, and he praised and extol and honor to the king of heaven. All whose works are truth and his, his ways justice. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. If you have a hard time saying thank you, repent of pride. If you have a hard time receiving thank you, repent of pride. Because God does not want to lift up any level of pride. Amen. Would you close your eyes for a moment? I just, want to, I just want to pray over you. I just pray, Father, that you would cause every one of these here to hear you say thank you. Let them hear, thank you. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for what you've done. I'm grateful for what you've chosen. I'm grateful for you coming to church. I, I just want to say thank you for coming to church, personally as a pastor. Because <laughs> it'd be hard to preach this by myself. Thank you for coming. Thank you for serving. Oh, you in the media, thank you so much for serving. Mr. Vic, thank you. Kathleen, thank you. Mario, thank you. All you that are on 
different posts all around. Thank you. All the, maybe you're off this week from serving and you're in the house. Thank you for all that you do because I know there's a lot of sacrifice. We take it for granted sometimes. And I just want to say thank you. All those that are on the camera, thank you so much. Those in the children's department, thank you. I, I want to just, I want you to just tune your ears into God's thanksgiving. Because what thanksgiving does is it lifts up a standard against the enemy. When it says that I should raise up, it says, it says that my, my grace is sufficient. And literally that word means, sufficient means to raise up a standard that lifts you above all the circumstances. That puts a border and a boundary between you and the enemy. That God is going to, in his grace, his saying thank you is going to lift you up above everything. His grace is going to lift you up above everything. His favor is going to lift you up above everything. I release this grace and this favor and this gratitude of God on your life today. In Jesus' name. We receive that? Amen, 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 amen. Thank you. Come on, let's stand to our feet. This, this, this sermon turned out to be much more sober than I expected. it. <laughs> Will you receive God's thanksgiving today? Will you receive that? Don't take anything that you do for God for granted. Don't take it lightly. God thinks it's beautiful. Even that one minute that you gave him is beautiful. Amen? I release the blessing of God over you. I release God's goodness to you. That you walk out and you walk out in the floodgates of God's goodness. That you would see the best yet to come. I release that, the hand of God on your life. That you would go out and you would have ears to hear his goodness. And that you would see his creation and give him praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. tell you the blessing so strong on you you can prosper in the midst of Egypt you can prosper in the midst of the worst place you can imagine the worst of the worst is your place to be planted in the New Testament the word is caress that word gratitude is caress which means thankfulness but also grace beautiful word and what happens is a person that has gratitude in their heart is a person that has capacity for more. Let's say that capacity for more. So when we're ungrateful, we close ourselves up because we think we can make it happen for ourselves. When we're grateful to God for everything that he's given us, we humble ourselves under his mighty hand. Then he says, ooh, I can pour more grace into you. And a person of, of gr a gratitude has much grace given to them, much capacity to do what our flesh could never do. Today in, pre in pre service prayer at Eastside, we were constantly praying, Lord, we need your grace today to do what flesh cannot do. Because our flesh is of no value whatsoever. We need God's grace, amen? To accomplish anything that God says we're to accomplish, we need his grace, which is not just a cover-up, but it's, it's an empowerment to do what flesh could never do. So that's this word, uh, charis, grace in the New Testament, and kindness, favor, beautiful. So let's read this, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. It says, but this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Now, normally we read this with offering giving, but think about uh, an amount of gratitude we can get to sow, because this applies to any kind of sowing. And he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. You need more grace than sow more gratitude. Amen? Every man, according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency let's say that all sufficiency I love that always having all sufficiency in all things I don't think God could have made it any more clear and broader always having all sufficiencies 
in all things may abound to every good work. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Huge repercussions, rewards for gratitude. Huge. It's so high on God's list. So high. You know, sometimes God gives us these messages, and I, I feel like I tell my husband this was one of those ultimate messages. Like, if we just get this right, then everything else is going to be right. You know, it's like, forget everything else. This is it. This is it. I feel this is it. If we can be grateful people and we humble ourselves, then God can pour out His grace on us, capacity, increase us, so that this scripture happens, that we will always, having all sufficiency in all things for all good works. <laughs> it's powerful. Have you ever noticed that you can just keep going when you have your eyes on the Lord in gratitude? And understand that all good things come from him who is the father of lights amen every good and perfect gift comes from above when we set our eyes on him all things are possible but when we then become ungrateful which is the spirit of this age and we start looking at what we don't have and what's annoying to us and who irritates us and what bugs us and how disappointed we are we become ungrateful and our capacity shrinks up 